Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Lewis, Lewis Speaks 2023, and today I want to talk to you all about the challenge of being an empath. I am an empath. What exactly is an empath? It's a person that is able to feel things at a higher degree. They're able to sense things in their environment and pick up on certain cues much more keenly than the average person. Um, these people are also known as highly sensitive persons and they're able to detect certain changes and certain shifts in their environment in certain spaces. They can feel those things much more intuitively and oftentimes empaths really struggle in this world because they feel things at a higher level and Oftentimes they're accused of being overly sensitive and their sensitivity is often shamed and criticized and made to feel as though it is a curse. The truth is being an empath is a gift and at times it can feel like a curse when you are in certain spaces. I know that I've had to leave certain spaces because I was just picking up on too much unkind energy too much unhelpful energy, too much destructive energy. And so I had to remove myself from certain spaces. And that's what empaths oftentimes have to do. They have to just remove themselves from certain situations, certain people, because they're picking up on frequencies that are not healthy. You know, a lot of this world, truth be told, is very toxic. And so empaths are able to pick up on the, the slightest nuance. They can pick up on the slightest nuances and they can feel the energy at a higher level. And oftentimes, many people will try to gaslight them and make them feel as though they're overreacting or they're somehow not perceiving the situation correctly. But the reality is, is they're given information way before their mind has a chance to really process it. They're oftentimes given emotional information way in advance and they don't know why they're feeling this way. You know, to illustrate that, sometimes you deal with people and you don't know why you don't like them. You don't know why their energy is off, but you can detect it. There's something not right about this person. And so you pick up on that and you don't quite know what it is in the moment. You try to rationalize it. You try to dissect it. You try to intellectualize it. But... The reality is there's something about their energy that is off and you're picking up on that. You're detecting that early, but sometimes you don't follow your intuition. And for an empath, their intuition is their greatest weapon. And it's a weapon that they oftentimes just don't tap into enough or they distrust. They don't trust their own intuition. And I think that that right there is why we why we struggle you know that's one of the challenges of being an empath is just we don't really always trust our intuition and so we continue to try and push through and white knuckle through our our sixth sense you know we're picking up on certain frequencies and yet and still we're not listening we keep on trying to stifle for the sake of trying to get along with someone for the sake of trying to keep the peace for the sake of trying to build relationship with someone but at the same time, that's where we go wrong, not listening to our intuition because our intuition is telling us there's just something not right about this situation, this person. And I think for me, I've experienced this on numerous occasions and I, I didn't listen to my intuition and then lo and behold, down the line, I was right, you know? And I think that you know, to be an empath in this world is just, it's challenging. It's challenging because you just, you see so much. You see the behind the scenes. And people will not validate what you see. So oftentimes being an empath, you are a loner. People will oftentimes try to discredit, try to undermine, try to discount your intuition, you know? And that to me is a deal breaker in my relationships. I gotta be real. If someone tries to undermine my intuition and they try to 
make me feel as though what I'm seeing is wrong and incorrect when I know damn well what I'm seeing is right, that right there is grounds for termination immediately. I just don't, I don't deal with that, that energy. I don't deal with that energy. And to me, I pride myself on being an energy worker. I feel certain energies, certain vibes, and a lot of it is off, you know? A lot of the vibes are off in this world. And as an empath, I've had to use certain techniques in order to keep myself safe. I've had to psychologically zipper up to keep myself safe. I've had to employ an emotional shield that I put up, an emotional armor to keep myself away from other people and to block out their negativity. Um, I've had to also distance myself from certain spaces and certain toxic workplaces. I've had to definitely get rid of that that negativity. I've had to just leave. And this is an effort to just preserve my own sanity, you know, because that right there is my best weapon. You know, being sane, being able to tune in, being able to be present, having that vulnerability, you know, is a good thing. But I oftentimes think that it can be used against you. There are so many people that try and use your vulnerability as ammunition against you. And that's the struggle when you put yourself out there. You know, like I put myself out there on many public platforms and I realized that this has made me a target. You know, this has made me a target for criticism, ridicule, but it also on the flip side has allowed me to connect. There's some beautiful things about vulnerability because it allows you to connect to the human spirit. It allows you to tap into that collective support. There are so many people going through so many different things and they're suffering in silence because they feel as though should they decide to verbalize their feelings, they're gonna be a target. And for some people, you will be a target, but for others, you'll also be a source of support. You'll be a lighthouse where people can run to. You know, you'll be a beacon of hope. And so you you take the bitter with the sweet. That's life. You know, when you put yourself out there, there is a chance, you know, that you're going to be targeted. You run the risk of being a target. And it's unfortunate, but that's the way of the world. You know, also when you shine your light, and this is seen in the scriptures, when you shine your light, you will be an object of hatred by the nations, you know? You will be an object, and the scriptures mention this time and time again, how you will always be an object of hatred on account of Jesus' name. You know, you're proclaiming righteousness, you're proclaiming justice, you're proclaiming honesty. People don't want to hear that. And so oftentimes you'll be a target, and that's why as an empath, you have got to learn how to protect your energy from the emotional vampires out there, you've got to learn how to zipper up psychologically and say to yourself, I'm not hearing any of this outside interference, this outside static. Ah, I don't want to hear that. You just put your shield up and that's essential. You've got to put your shield up and protect yourself because if you don't, you will constantly find yourself dysregulated. You will constantly wonder why I feel this way. Why do I continue to experience these different moods and these shifts that are unhealthy it's because you're allowing so many people to affect your energy and to enter into your energy sphere you have to definitely learn how to keep a shield around you i realize that a lot of people are not worth your time your energy and your investment you oftentimes try and be good to people and try to include them and try to invite them to your table and a lot of people do not deserve to sit at your table they don't deserve to sit at your table and so what you have to do as an empath is learn how to walk away learn how to for one trust your intuition when something approaches your energy that feels foreign pay attention to that zero in on that focus on why i'm feeling this way
Why am I feeling this, this sense of dysregulation? Because a lot of times it's because these people do not have the best intentions. You know, how many people in this world actually want to see you win? There's so many people that are committed to seeing you lose, to seeing you fail. And then there's so many people also who want to see you win. And you have to learn how to lean into the love. Lean into the love, lean into the light. Because honestly, there are some good people out there that want to see you win, that really want to see you elevate to your highest potential. But then there are some other people who are just so unevolved. They're just so wounded that they can't see past their own wounding. And you know, I don't think, for me personally, I don't think people are bad. I think people are insecure. I think people are wounded. I think people are hurt. I think people struggle with a lot of unhealed wounds. And it's because of those unhealed wounds that they lash out. You know, the old adage, hurt people hurt people. Well, that's the truth. Hurt people do hurt people. And it's unfortunate, but that's the reality. And so our assignment is to learn how to protect ourselves better with boundaries, learn how to zipper up, learn how to employ our shield, learn how to customize, customize our protection system and stop caring so much about what they're going to think, how other people are going to feel. Because the thing about it is that's not your bag. You have one life, and it's your responsibility to honor and protect that one life. Even if it means disconnecting from other people or hurting their feelings. If protecting me bothers you, well, guess what? You're going to stay bothered because I'm not going to stop protecting myself to make you more comfortable. You know? <clears throat> we always do that. We always set ourselves on fire to keep other people warm. We always try and make other people comfortable at the expense of our truth and our needs. No more. As empaths, we always try to get along. We always try to connect and harmonize and blend. And we always try to foster a sense of togetherness. But I realize this, a lot of people, they don't want to get together. They want disharmony, discord. They want dysfunction. They want chaos because chaos affords them this illusion of freedom. I'll say that again. Chaos affords them this illusion of freedom. You know, since nothing makes sense, you're free to do anything, so they feel. And they try to run amok in your life. And that's where you have to set the boundary. Put up the shield. Zipper up. Because if you don't do that, you're going to constantly find yourself dysregulated. So, I hope that these tools are helpful for all empaths. Definitely, I review the tools again. Your emotional shield, putting that up. Psychological zippering, where you zipper up and you don't listen to any of the outside disturbance, any of the outside static. You just focus on what you're trying to get across. Also, therapeutic distance, learning how to keep your distance and walk away from spaces that are not serving you. Also, when you're activated and when you're triggered, learning how to get away and retreat. There's nothing wrong with retreating to recollect and regroup. You have to do that for yourself. That's essential. So once again, I hope that you employ these tools and these skills and begin to also set boundaries. That's going to be crucial because you have to protect yourself. If you love yourself, if you honor the gift that God has given you, then you have got to learn how to protect it because you have work to do. You have work to do. And your work, your work requires you to be whole. It requires you to be fully regulated, calm, serene, and at peace with yourself. It requires you to trust your intuition and how to trust your intuition, you have to trust it and that helps build it back up. The more you trust your intuition, the more you definitely has faith, you know? Your intuition wants to have faith in you and it can have faith in you when you trust it more. It's a two-way street. 
My intuition wants to believe me. My intuition wants to believe in me. But first, I have to have faith in it and trust it more. So from now on going forward, I make a pact with myself and a commitment with myself to always trust my intuition, to always trust me, and to verify, you know, and to make sure and to really do that work, you know, that, that inner work, you know, because there's too many people trying to talk you out of your own mind. And so you have to definitely come back to yourself, center yourself and know what's right and live with integrity because the more integrity you have, the more integrity you have, the better able you, you're able to survive. The more you stand your ground and you don't waver on the issues and waver on things that you know are true, that's how you begin to build your intuition and your trust in yourself. Self-trust is everything. So to my empaths, begin to trust yourself. Begin to employ the skills and the techniques to protect yourself and keep yourself whole. So I hope this video was helpful. Definitely like, share. All my empaths out there, if you want to share some of your things, some of your techniques and some of your strategies on how you manage, you know, how you manage your emotions, that's really helpful. So thank you so much. I love y'all. Peace.